Good morning. A couple of people asked me how I would play a list of two double reinforced squig hurt. So here it is. So here's the list. So Kings gets grand strategy is chase in the moon. Our triumph is double indomitable. So this is where we don't run away. We pass battle shocks. We can use this to pass battle shock on hurt. We have a web spinner shaman with the staff of sneaky stealing and uh, merciless blizzard. We have another web spinner shaman with hoarfrost. Scragrot the Loon King. Um, a squig boss to help our herd out. Um, and then a madcap shaman who is our general. Who is going to sit in the back with the clammy hand. Yep. Uh, so then our battle line, two double reinforced squig herd. And then we have two units of stabas. Uh, and then we also have gobblepalooza and sneaky snufflers in an attempt to support our, our kind of, uh, our, our efforts here. Okay, so if I was just gonna pick a random map, here's kind of how, here's kind of how, like, I feel like this, this army is gonna work. So, of course, we have our two units of Squig Herd, and we have our Squig Boss. So, the important thing with the Squig Boss is that we watch our ranges. We need to start the game with both of our Squig Herd wholly within 12 inches of our Squig Boss. It's also generally a good idea. I think we're only, um, we're fairly high drop, so we might get attacked. So, we just need to make sure that our Squig Boss isn't uh, deployed right at the front so that he can't get got with uh, the rest of our... Uh, army. I mean, realistically, like, this list here plays the Andorian Acolytes, and then Warlord Battalion, and the Warlord is used for the Double Triumph, but, I mean, I think that uh, you could definitely go with just trying to be two drops. I don't think that you need... I don't think that the um, Andorian Acolytes is super useful, because there's no spells that you really have to get. All of our most important buffs in this list just come like for free, like from Squig Boss and Gobblepalooza. And there's so many casts, right? Gobblepalooza has two, Scragrod has two, we have two uh, web spinners and a fungoid, so we are at seven spells, and nothing in particular really has to go off, with the exception of maybe Hand of Gork. But I mean, like, there's not really a ton of stuff going on. Oh, yeah, and our um, that's what our Madcap Shaman has in the back for spell is uh, Hand of Gork. Okay, so whatever, here's our Loon Shrine. Oops. I won't. Here we go. And then we have... So, one of our Squig Herds is going to get Gobblepalooza, and one of our Squig Herd is going to get Sneaky Snufflers. They play very similar roles. Sneaky Snufflers is going to give their 5-up ward, and Gobblepalooza is going to give their minus one to hit. So both of these units are providing some kind of cover and a defensive buff for the herd. Okay, um, Scragrot does sort of his own thing, right? He can sort of go where he needs to be. But with one of the units of herd, we're going to bring one of the web spinner shamans. And with the other unit of herd, we're going to uh, bring the other web spinner shaman. And then everything else is basically just in the back line, like our Fungoid Cave Shaman, sorry, our um, uh, Madcap Shaman is, is going to hide behind the Loon Shrine, right? He has a 24, he, he has the Hand of Gork, so, he, so the range on that is 24 inches, so he can still affect a lot of stuff from being hidden really far back. He also enables our Grand Strat. He just has to be under the light of the bad mood for three turns. So he's essentially going to guarantee our Grand Strat. And um, yeah, like he doesn't need to do anything or be anywhere. And then in the back are two units of Stabas just act like screens for the back line. Super easy, super uh, symmetrical, which is nice. So then what does it look like? Well, a regular like... We're, we're probably going to be made to go first. One of the reasons that I think that it's actually okay to be a high drop in this list, like one of the benefits is that you uh, you have heard. So if your opponent is like, you go first, it's like, okay, here come the herd. You're, you're saying to your opponent, like, you don't, you don't want me to go first because if I go first, I'm coming at you and I'm going to pin you. So then your opponent's like, well... Uh, like, what do I do then? 
So, you know, going like, um, like I'd have to relook at the list to see what else we could fit, but maybe even like Wizard Finder, uh, Warlord's okay, Endoran Acolytes is okay. So I'm kind of torn. It's like, do you want to be a two drop list and control the pacing? Do you want your opponent to go first? Or do you not care about going first and, and you'll just, just go like it doesn't matter to you? But here's kind of the idea, okay? So one unit of herd is going to be our aggressive unit of herd. They are going to get the uh, squig boss that goes with them. They also have the um, uh, one of the web spinners that goes with them. And I'm kind of thinking that the web spinner, if you want to have one web spinner that has hoarfrost, it's going to pair with the squig boss. Because if you're going to cast hoarfrost on the herd, you don't want to have gobblepalooza because they also have a buff. Right? So this one here would be like Hoarfrost and um, Hoarfrost and the Squig Boss. And then now they also have a 5-up ward because they have Sneaky Snufflers. Right? And again, Sneaky Snufflers is a good teleport target to teleport it up to the front. And they act as a really good uh, screen. Right? They're actually surprise surprisingly tanky. And to make sure that we hit our Squig Boss, if you're going to, you know, like be going a long way, all you have to really make sure to do is that you leave some kind of tail, right? As long as they all have, as long as they are base to base, you can sort of leave little tails like this and the Squig Boss can be uh, well within range, no problem, right? Easy game. And then Snufflers can be positioned however you need their screen to be. You just need to make sure that you're holy within 12 of one of the models, which is not very difficult at all. And then the other unit of herd is going to be more like a defensive unit of herd. They're going to be sticking maybe on an objective or further to the back. And same thing, right? We have our Gobblepalooza sort of screen, and then we have our Blizzard Wizard just inside there. And then in the back line, right, Scragrot's going to be moving up and doing whatever he, his thing is. And then we have these ridiculous stab of screens, which are going to be able to basically zone out and protect the Loon Shrine in whatever way we feel like that is necessary. And so here's kind of how the like the battlefield uh, plays out, right? You have like your blocks are heard and then essentially layers upon layers of screens going all the way back to our little fungoid guy in the back and Scragrot the Loon King, uh, who's also, you know, super important bringing the bad moon. Uh, up with him as well which in this list is not all that important to be to be fair i think the the best use for the the moon in this list is going to be making sure that the sneaky snufflers are under the light of the bad moon so that they get a two up roll on their for their ward and not a, a three up and it also gives a one in three chance of giving plus one attacks to the herd as well so that's good right so over here uh these guys have plus one rend and they also have the uh, minus one to hit aura against them so you know they're okay they're gonna sit in the back and do their thing we also have the blizzard wizard for some extra damage these guys are looking good and up at the front this unit of herd they have a five up ward and they also have whenever they roll a six to hit it deals mortals so they are also uh, doing pretty good and then we have our um yeah, I mean, if anything is really coming in the back to get you, that's what this unit of herd is for. This unit of herd is, is playing more back. They're playing more defensively. So if I wanted to, let's say, throw on an actual... Um, an actual s real state of the game. I'm not going to be able to do this whole army, am I? One go? Probably not. So how would this look like actually deployed on a real battlefield? Let's get a random, some train bits. Sure, it's fine. Okay, so I'm gonna stick the Loon Shrine somewhere up. Turn it like this. Cool. If I'm a million drops, well, the first thing I'm gonna do is stick my little shaman behind. No big deal. Got my herd coming up the front. So this is what Fountains of Frost. So the special one is that we can't have a ton of stuff stacked on an, on an objective, right? Yeah, score one, score two, score more, and then you just can't have three or more units on an objective. Cool. So the herd's gonna come up to the front here and probably line up like something like this. Cool. This herd is gonna come up to the front like this. Um. Let's just go all in on one side, hello. Let's 
stick these guys up here. There's the odd dude in the back that needs to get rearranged. Cool. Snufflers. Position themselves over here. They're probably going to be teleported. If I was a little bit more worried about like screens, I could also position them more like this. All right, just sewing them out. Maybe I use them just to take this objective at the start. That's fine. Here's one of my fungoids or my um, whatever they're called. Uh, uh, yeah, fungoid cave shamans. If I know that I'm, I get to go first, I can stick squig boss up here. I didn't do a good job of releasing the squigs, did I? Nope, I did not. We have to make sure that we're wholly within 12. Yeah, you get the idea. Something like this. Right? Something like that. The other guys are wholly within 12. Um, cool. Scraggy. Gonna take a center position. Gobapalooza over on this side. Probably keep them off the objective. Whatever. And then our Stabas are just gonna sit in defensive positions ready. I mean, I can, if I want, depending on the army that I'm playing against, depending on what kind of movement shenanigans and teleports they have, like I could stick them over like this, or I could stick them somewhere like this and really create like a long, annoying screen to get through, right? I could do something like this, right? And just zone out a bunch of stuff in the back line, right? Because like, there's not gonna be, this is nine inches, there's not gonna be a ton of room, right? So if I just position somewhere like this, there's nowhere that they can teleport in my back line. Or I could keep them, if I was concerned about like, more like a flank attack, I could stick them in a position more like this. And then as everything else sort of moves up, they can sort of tighten in on the shrine and just sort of put, put themselves in a position where they're just zoning out whatever needs to be zoned out. And that's all they're gonna do. They're just gonna sit in the back. They're gonna sit in the back, they're gonna cap my own objectives and they're gonna play defense. Okay, that's the move, right? And then, so turn one, what I'm looking for is uh, I'm gonna unleash the squigs and then I'm gonna move the squigs forward. So they're gonna go like quite far up the board, right? So like these squigs, for example, are gonna try to come in here and 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 pin and be just be really annoying over here. And this unit of squigs is probably gonna move somewhere just uh, up closer into the middle, right? Squig boss is gonna come here. We're probably gonna end up with a tail coming backwards to the squig boss. As I said before, these snufflers are gonna come and like zo like be a be an annoying screen over here just kind of make sure that you know we're wholly within 12 of whatever of wherever they are and then they, the snufflers can actually space out a little bit like this and just kind of be annoying and in the way if they die that's okay because we're playing king's gets and we have the clammy hand so if, if they die they're just coming back and we can teleport them back to the front line wherever they they need to go right they could even sort of curl back so that we're not exposing ourselves really at all a nice solid line it's like come at me bro you know get, out, get off there doesn't matter uh my unit of stab is just gonna like whatever like close in and, and stick like over here or something like this right just just kind of screen and this unit of stab is gonna do the same thing they're just gonna slowly kind of come back right he's gonna move up this guy's gonna sit back here and do nothing and uh, Gobble Police is going to do the same thing on this side. They're going to just like be kind of an annoying uh, screen for the herd. And these, this herd doesn't even really have to go anywhere, right? Like they can just kind of hang out and uh, and be annoying and like take objectives and, and whatnot. So they might just be setting up, getting ready for the next round. You know, I could even stick them in a position where the uh, the herd is, is uh, or the squig boss is ready to buff them next. If that's what I feel like I need to do. And then, you know, our, our, our Gabba Palooza can just be another sort of line of defense here against uh, the middle, depending on what I'm concerned about, right? They got to be wholly within 12 of the spiker to get the to get the buff, and they got to be wholly within 12 of it, the uh, Shroomancer to get that buff as well, the minus one to hit aura. So here we are, right? It's like we got five up board, minus one to hit, attack damage, Hoarfrost. We got our Blizzard Wizard is probably He's trying to make his way up to the front somewhere. I don't know where he is. He's lost in the shuffle. But that's alright. And this is kind of how I envision playing this list. So hopefully this is a little bit helpful. Tell me what you would do differently. Like, subscribe. Wow.